Welcome to a bit of a special video. A lot of you have been asking about my workflow between Blender and Unreal, and so I thought today we're gonna take a more detailed look of my workflow between Blender to Unreal, including how I bring my assets over to Unreal, or having the correct scale and everything, making sure that the rigs work okay, how I import my animations. As a little bonus, I'm also gonna show you how you can use the animations that come with the Unreal Engine mannequin, or any animation on the asset store, and apply them to your own character using animation retargeting. And one more thing before you skip ahead, I highly recommend that you take a moment, sit down and watch this video. I promise you won't regret it. See, exporting stuff from Blender to Unreal is a little bit like stepping across an active minefield. If you miss one step, you might really screw the whole thing up and it might cost you a lot of hours. So just, you know, so let's get going. I'll assume that you know a bit of Blender because I'm not gonna go too deep into how things work, but if you're unsure of anything, there are tons of tutorials out there that can help you through. I might suggest a few as well. Okay, so we're in Blender. I have my character here. He's fully rigged and ready to go. I'm gonna take you through how I now export this character into Unreal and get everything to work. So the first thing you wanna do and make sure is that you have the scale set up correctly. So. And this is a bit of a tricky part. You wanna go over to here and check your units. So by default, it's gonna look like this. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that your unit scale is set to 0 0.01, okay? And the reason for that is the default units in Blender are meters and the units in Unreal are centimeters. So there's a conversion problem there. It would make sense to set this to centimeters and just set the scale to one, right? And I've seen a lot of people who actually do that and use that method. However, things will appear to be fine, but you will quickly notice after you do some digging that some problems will arise. And a bit later, I'll show you exactly what I mean. But for now, let's just set things up correctly. So you wanna set the length to meters, and keep your unit scale to 0.01 to account for that conversion. All right. The next thing that I like to do, and especially for this character, because he's so simple, is that I set up some materials inside of Blender. So we're gonna go to object mode, we're gonna select our boxer, go down to materials, and so I already have materials set up, but basically, if you wanna make a new material, just make new, leave it as it is by default, and choose a base color you're liking, you can make it blue. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Unfortunately, the material is not actually going to transfer very well into Unreal. So you might be wondering why are we even bothering with this? Well, it'll all make sense in a moment. So just stay with me. The important thing is that you just choose a color and you can call it uh, base, for example. So I'm gonna be using, I'm just gonna choose my own materials that I already have, but they're just basically a material with a color. So we'll go with base, so you can see here. Make sure we're rendering this. Okay, and we're gonna add another color which will be the glove color, which is a red. It's the same kind of material, it's just red instead. Uh, so I, now I wanna assign this material to a glove. So the way to do that is to switch over to edit mode. So you can just select one polygon and click Control L and that'll select the entire mesh. You can see that it's actually disconnected from the rest of the body. So we wanna do that on the entire glove. So we select polygons on one on each piece for the glove here, for example, hit Control L and now I have these selected. What I wanna do now is hit the gloves material and hit assign. And now I've assigned this material to our gloves. Okay, great, that's it. So so I'm not gonna mess around with the actual materials. I just wanna put a different color on each thing so that I can quickly distinguish between them. All right, so that's it for materials. So one more thing before we can actually export this thing. Okay, so the thing with Unreal is that you can create your rig however you want. You can have however many bones you want, you can call them whatever you want, and then when you import them into Unreal, it'll become an, its own asset, and any animation you make for that skeleton will be fully compatible. However, if you wanna use the animations that come with Unreal, you have to be a little bit more careful, and I highly recommend that you use the same amount of bones and that you have the same naming. It'll make everything so much easier, you'll see. So that's what I've done for this character. So for example, um, you can see the names of my bones here, pelvis, spine one, spine two, and I've kept them the same as Unreal's, and if you don't know how to check that, it's pretty simple. So here I've just created a scene for us, it's based on the third person, it's based on the third person preset, and if you go in here, in the mannequin and the character and mesh, double click the mannequin skeleton, you can now go into the skeleton tree and you can see all the bones. So you can use this as a reference when you're setting up your own rig. And I would highly recommend that you name it the same as you see here, because it'll make things later so much easier. And to be clear, if you, for example, don't have fingers, you don't have to include that. Just build from the base up and include what you need. But don't skip one part in the chain. So for example, don't skip spine two and just jump directly to spine three. That's not gonna work. So that's the right down here. You can see pelvis, spine, spine two. Uh, one thing that's a little confusing though, is that in Unreal, 
you'll have something at the very top here called root. So you may be wondering, oh, should I create a bone called root? No, you shouldn't. When you create your rig in Blender, the top piece will be called armature. All you gotta do is just rename that to root, like that. And that's it, you don't need to do anything else. So you don't need to actually create a bone for that. So that's that, and, and oh, you have to do that. Don't export with it named armature, it'll screw everything up. So yeah, it's a little weird, but just go with it. All right, okay, so our character is now ready to be exported into Unreal, and you definitely wanna check your scale as well. So what I'd like to do is just grab this measuring tape here, drag it from top to bottom. Okay, 1.8 meters, yeah, that, that's definitely realistic. All right. So the next step is to now export this character over into Unreal. The first thing that I like to do, you can see I have some lights here and I've sorted everything into different collections. So I have my main character here in this. So I'm just gonna do select objects and hit file export FBX. I'm just gonna call this boxer tutorial. All right, so now we're gonna go over the export settings. So the settings that I use is that I basically deselect anything other than the other mesh and armature, all right? That's all we need. We don't need lights, we don't need cameras. I also like to take selected objects because I don't want to export those lights. And that's why we also selected our character so that that's the only thing we'll be exporting. Can leave that as it is. Under geometry, if you've ever exported something from Blender to Unreal before, you might have encountered this error. To get rid of that, you want to make sure under geometry to set smoothing to face. That will just remove that problem altogether. The rest you can leave as it is. So under armature, what I like to do is I just remove the leaf bones. Those aren't required and I choose to only include deformed bones. What that'll do is it'll just delete any IK controllers or anything that you have in Blender that you use for animation and it'll only include things that actually help drive the animation of the character. And that's great because it'll get rid of a lot of bloat for us. So I like to keep that ticked. The rest you can leave as it is. And then under animation, obviously this is not gonna include animation. So I'm just gonna untick that and we're ready to export. So boom, export that, done. Okay, so over in Unreal, I'm gonna create a new folder, Boxer. And I'm just gonna drag it right in here. And here's the magical part. There's a lot of buttons here. Don't need to touch any of them. Perfect. All you can do is hit import, but I'm just gonna go over one thing. So you can assign a skeleton here. You don't wanna do that. Sin uh, so if you leave this blank, it'll just generate its own skeleton. And since I'm using a custom rig that I built myself, I definitely want Unreal to do that. So I'm just gonna leave it just as it is. I'm not gonna touch anything. Reset to default. I'm gonna just hit import. Give it a while. Okay, so we've got five files here. So to start off, obviously the materials don't look the same. If you look here, this is really glossy and in Unreal, it's not. The specular component and all that stuff, it won't carry through, unfortunately. However, the reason we set up the materials in Blender the way we did is because now you have these material slots, see? You have the one for the body and you have the one for the gloves. And you can now replace the material you see here with your own materials. For example, I can grab this, which obviously <laughs> doesn't work at all, but you get the idea. Now you can create your own materials inside Unreal and you can assign them to the gloves and the body, even though it's part of the same object, right? So you wouldn't have been able to do that otherwise. I think that's really handy. Uh, I like to work that way. So that's the materials part. And now for the rig part. And you can see now that our character is in here, the scale is correct and no problem. Okay, so to roll back to what I was mentioning earlier about scale, let me now show you what happens if you don't set it up the way we did. Okay, so I've seen a few other people do it this way where you basically have the unit system be metric, unit scale set to one, but you change the length to centimeters, which would now make it the same unit as Unreal. And this makes perfect sense and I would love for it to work this way. Okay, so I'm just gonna export it like this instead. All right, we're gonna throw that in there. Boom. Now, this is gonna be a little tricky because, okay, you'll see now how this is. This is, it took me a while. So if I just take this and just drag it in, you'll see that it seems like they're the same. They're the same scale, they look the same. Good to go, right? Ah, well. So I want you to look at our correct boxer. So we're gonna open up the asset. And we're gonna move over to our physics asset, all right? And you'll see that Unreal has set up these automatic bodies for our character, okay? If you've seen my latest devlog, you've seen me playing around with this. Now let me move over to the one with the incorrect scale. And now you'll notice that it looks a little bit different, okay? You can see that the head is really large and there's only one body for the entire arm. The hand isn't even included and the same for the legs. We have way fewer physics bodies here. Now why is that? Well. I was confused as well. In our correct one, we have bodies set up for each bone, everything is looking correct and it's all good. But here we don't. What I figured out is that while it looks to be correct when you import it into Unreal, the scale, 
it is actually reading it wrong somehow. And I don't know how, maybe it's a bug, but it, it, it reads it wrong somehow. And that's why it's doing this because when it generates this physics asset, it has a threshold for scale. So if a bone is too small, it won't generate a physical collider for it. And that's what's happening here. It is reading everything to be tiny, 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 tiny small. And I don't know what else there might be. There might be other problems as well that I haven't found yet. So I would, so sorry, that was a bit of a tangent. I just wanted to, to mention that because this is something that cost me a lot of headache. So uh, I thought that would hopefully be valuable to some of you. All right, moving on. Okay, next up, let's move over to animations. So I've reset my scale back to the correct values. And remember, once you start animating, you cannot start touching with the scales anymore because you won't be able to change it after that. So make sure that everything is set up correctly before you start animating. Okay, so before I animate, I like to set up my workspace like this. Uh, I'll set that to dope sheet and choose action editor and just make it a little bigger. Split this out and set this to nonlinear animation. Okay, so you will under need to understand how the action editor and the NLA works a little bit for this to work. Like if you just follow along and you've never used them before, this will be a little confusing. So just warning you. If you wanna learn more about them, I'll put some links in the description that were really helpful for me when I was learning. Um, if you watch my devlogs, you know I was struggling with this a lot. So, uh, but yeah, okay, let's get going. We're gonna make a couple of simple animations. We wanna make two animations so that you can see that they're all coming through fine in one file and everything. So. We'll just start with a little wave animation, always nice. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I create a new action and I call it what I want it to be, wave. Cool, I'm gonna make sure to click the fake user button here, the little shield, and now I can start animating. So move over to pose mode and set up the pose. And maybe move the arm up a little, make it more interesting. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm a professional animator, no problem. Insert a keyframe, boom, move forward 20 frames maybe. Yeah keyframe that and here we go hello okay now i want to bring this into the nla strip boom and now there it is so now i want to name this track wave now if this is confusing again you're gonna have to watch a tutorial on this because it is really confusing <laughs> i'm fully aware but just stay with me here just, just just ignore this for now if you don't know what i mean now i want to create another animation it's going to be a little bonk we want to like bonk him on the head a little bit I'm just going to click new call it bonk and Boink, 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 great. All right, okay, same thing. Bring it into the NLA, name it bonk. And now you see we have these two tracks here. It's pretty neat. So if I highlight the bonk, you will see that that's what's playing. Boink, boink. And then if I highlight wave, you'll see that it's the wave. Uh, okay, and that's it. Now we're ready to export to Unreal. Easy, huh? However, again, minefield. Here's another little mine for you. Now we think we're all good. We're just gonna export our animations. And so let's move ahead and do that. So you're gonna have to change a few settings. Obviously now we wanna actually export the animations and we didn't do that before. So the way you do that is to just simply click bake animations down here. All right. And what I like to do is I untick the all actions. So now we're only gonna be exporting the NLA strips. Otherwise you would get duplicates of each animation. So anything else you can leave as they are. Okay, so a couple of things you gotta do now before you import. Now we do want animations, right? So you gotta click import animations. Uh, however, the skeleton, this time we do actually wanna select a skeleton because if we don't select a skeleton here, it'll generate a new one. Uh, we don't wanna do that. We wanna use the same skeleton that we generated when we imported the boxer the first time. This will tell Unreal that these animations are specifically for the same skeleton that our boxer is using. So very important here to select your boxer skeleton or whatever your skeleton is. Now you can hit import and great. And so you'll notice that we have all the same stuff as before, obviously, because we exported that, but you also have two new files and these are our two animations, but now you're gonna be like, whoa, what the? Because if we double click here, you see we have the wave and it's all looking fine. Well, it looks like something. It looks like what we did at least. <laughs> However, if you now look at this one, which is the bonk one, you notice that that doesn't do anything. Now why? Why is that? Yeah, I was wondering that too, believe you me okay so i'm gonna show you exactly and this took me hours to figure out like i'm telling you hours okay so you're i'm saving you so much time now i'm just gonna delete all these 
because we're gonna start over and I'm gonna explain why this happened. Okay, you noticed how I had this star selected, right? I had wave selected. That means that it only exports that animation. I don't know why, because it still exports the other ones. They just leave them in the in the A pose. So what you have to do here is you have to click again on the star to untick it. And now, now it'll export all the animations. So if you had had bonk selected, it would have exported bonk correctly, but not wave. So make sure to untick that. Now you're fine. <laughs> Okay, yes, great feature, I do agree. All right, okay, same thing. Select the skeleton, import animations, import, and boom! And there you go, here it is. We've got the bonk animation, and you've got your wave, which is now compatible with your boxer. What I do now is I just delete these things that I don't need, and, um, and there I am. Now I'm left with the animations. So now I can, for example, click this, use animation asset, select one, maybe the bonk, and now you can see that he's uh, bonking. Awesome. So yeah, that's pretty much my workflow. That's how I've been working up until now in the boxing game. And it's been working great so far. And as I promised, as a little bonus, I'll also show you how you can now take the animations you see on the mannequin and apply them to this character. And that's a little bit of a tricky part. So super bonus for you. You're gonna have to do something that is known as animation retargeting, and that's what we're gonna talk about next. A few steps involved. It's not too complicated once you know how to do it, but it can definitely uh, cause a bit of headache if you're a little new. So, step number one is to set up our mannequin for retargeting. So basically, what retargeting means is that you're taking an animation that is designed for a completely different rig, and you're converting it to be compatible with a custom rig, or any two rigs for that matter. They do need to share similarities though, otherwise it's gonna be all... <laughs> Okay, mannequin. So, so what you want to start by doing is, for example, if you wanted to use the animations from your mannequin, you're going to have to go into the rig of the mannequin. So you click the mannequin, uh, character, mesh, and you have the mannequin skeleton. Let's open that up. So on the left here, you'll see you have a retarget manager. So you want to open that up. What you want to do now is you want to click the select humanoid rig. Boom. And because this is set up to be a humanoid, uh, it's already good to go. Like these, these naming conventions are good. So if this is confusing, don't worry. Just click save and now you can close this. That's it. That's all you got to do for the mannequin. Now you want to go into your boxer. Boxer and open up the skeleton. Now you're gonna do the same thing here. You select humanoid rig. Now, because I used the same naming convention as the rig for Unreal Engine and the same amount of bones and everything, this just works now, you can see. Uh, but if you didn't do that, you can go in here manually and you can select what the pelvis is, you select the pelvis and you select the, the spine, etc. So you can go and select them manually, but because I kept the naming convention the same, it's now populated it automatically and it's all good to go, which is super nice. And that's why I chose to do that. So what you need to do now is just simply save it. And now they will be compatible almost, but we'll get to that. And don't forget to save. You have to save this, otherwise it won't work. So now you want to browse to the animation that you would like to retarget. Go into your mannequin, uh, animations. Let's say we wanted to apply this animation to our boxer. Right click on that animation, retarget anim asset, duplicate anim assets and retarget. And now you'll see that the skeleton shows up here. If it doesn't, it means there is a difference in the skeleton. And then you need to go back to that list and just make sure that you've selected each bone for corresponding to each thing. There might be one missing there. And if that's the case, this won't work. But if you've done it correctly, it should show up here. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to hit retarget and that's it. Okay, now you may notice that there are a couple of things here. The head is on the ground and the gloves and arms are a little strange. Okay, but it kind of does what it's supposed to do though. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to go into your boxer and move over to skeleton tree here. And in the options, you want to go over to show retargeting options. So currently the route is going to be set to uh, recursively set translation retargeting animation, which is not really going to work. The thing is that now it's just taking the straight animations from the mannequin and applying them straight up to the boxer. Why the head is on the floor, I don't actually know. It's pretty dumb, but the issue with the arm is uh, because the, the, the scale and everything is wrong. So. Uh, what you need to do is you need to set this to recursively set translation retargeting skeleton. Boom. And then you want to take this skeleton and set it to animation scaled. Okay, save that. Now let's move back to our animation. Great, looking lovely. Okay, so now everything is in place. So that fixed that issue. So everything is looking nice. 
but you may notice one thing and that's that the hands are a little are a little tight right the reason why that is is because if we now look at if we bring up our mannequin and if i now compare this to my boxer you see that the arms of the mannequin are a little higher than our boxer character so we can fix that by going to our boxer going to the retarget manager we now want to match the rest pose of our boxer to our mannequin to make it translate better between animations so i'm going to select the arm and just rotate it up by maybe 10 degrees should do the trick you'll also notice that his elbows are slightly bent so i'm going to do that as well then by maybe 20 degrees cool next step is to click here modify pose use current pose you click that now it's stored that as a new rest pose when retargeting so you can see you can hide the pose and it will be back to normal so it's not destructive but we can view the pose and that's what it is so let's save that and you will have to regenerate the animation now though so i'm going to go back and delete the one we have and again right click retarget duplicate select our thing yeah okay so see this is where you can compare the different po the the two rest poses and now you can see that this one lines up pretty well with that one so let's hit retarget and play that and yeah i mean obviously it's still intersecting a little bit because his hands are so big but you can clearly see how it's looking way better now you can see his elbows are a bit more bent and it's matching up a lot better we could even bring the arms out a little bit more if, if you wanted to get rid of that intersection when doing the rest pose but yeah that's how you retarget animations and you can now see you can go into animations and you can maybe do the idle retarget that as well just same thing retarget boom and now we have idle and yeah you have an idle animation and the the and the good thing with this is that uh Anyways, uh, this is basically my entire workflow. Hopefully this is helpful to you. Uh, I know a lot of you were asking about it, so I hope I didn't leave anything out that you were wondering about. If you're new, if this is the first video you're watching, consider subscribing. Uh, I mainly do uh, devlog videos, which I put a lot of time and love into, and you might wanna check those out if you're into that. If not, yeah, this is how you export stuff from Blender to Unreal. Well, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, hit the bell, everything, you know what to do, and I'll see you in the next video.